going on guys it's your boy john the liquidator coming back with another video so i look like stephanie white just wrapped up a one-on-one -on -one interview with the indiana fever and i'm here to tell you this update is major for this one here we gotta go all the way up to indy let's get it let's go <laughs> for Indiana Fever fans and pretty much Caitlin Clark fans all over the nation. Stephanie White gave her press conference earlier today, and I'm giving you another update because she just wrapped up another first one-on-one -on -one interview with the Indiana Fever, and she dropped major information. She spoke about how important Kelsey Mitchell is. Now, they really didn't speak about Kelsey Mitchell that much in the opening part of the press conference it wasn't too much talked about it was mostly Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark now we know Kelsey Mitchell was currently going through uh propositions and litigations with her contract and I'm here to tell you she immediately opened up this one sit down interview speaking about Kelsey Mitchell which I think is great for the future we gotta share light on Kelsey Kelsey is a big time playmaker to me I believe Kelsey is the leader of that locker room she's the leader of that team they need to speak about her a little more and implement her into this new system that we call the Indiana fever something else she talked about is how she's going to get Caitlin and Aaliyah Boston and pretty much the rest of this team ready for this 2025 season. The league has changed. Every team is better. Anyone could get it at any given night, pretty much. And the WNBA is at the highest it's ever been. With all that being said, I'm done talking. Roll the footage. With the people that you love and the people that you want to go to battle with every single day. Hello and welcome into Inside Fever Basketball. I'm Pat Boylan and we are thrilled to be joined by the next head coach of the Indiana Fever, Stephanie White. Stephanie, your roots in basketball are so deep. As deep as maybe anybody in the history of this state. Miss Basketball national champion at Purdue, a player for the Fever, a coach for the Fever. So why is right now the right time for you to return to Indiana? You know, I, I, um, I, I can't imagine the stars aligning any better. You know, certainly after having gone off and, and, and had a number of other experiences from a coaching standpoint, uh, growing, growing up, learning, um, the Fever going through some, some changes as well. And, and and now at this point, when where basketball has has taken to another level in the WNBA and for the Indiana Fever, um, and and to be able to come back and work with another twenty two, um, you know, a, a generational player in, in Caitlin Clark, um, a generational player in Aaliyah Boston. Certainly, when you think about back to back Rookie of the Years and what each of those players have done up until this point for their universities um, in the game of basketball, for for the women's basketball culture and community, um, it's unprecedented. And to be able to to work with with those guys and, and Kelsey Mitchell, who I think has weathered the storm of Indiana Fever basketball and I felt like had the best year of her career, you know, this year. And, and really, when you think about teams, you think about a core three, right? You think about a big three. And, and to be able to work with that big three, um, and, and continue to work and put pieces around them to compete for a championship um, back in my home state. It just it couldn't have aligned any better. I want to ask you about all those big three, but let's start here with Caitlin mm -hmm. and the opportunity and the inflection point that this league yeah. and this franchise is on right now. How excited are you? How would you describe the opportunity in front of you to get to coach a transcendent athlete like Caitlin Clark? Yeah, it's um, you know, it's interesting because I've been able to see it from the sideline for so many years with her, and and I will never forget calling a game at Maryland um, last year, and I was in the same hotel as them for the first time, and I came down the escalator, had to have been three hours before the game, uh, maybe three and a half hours before the game, and the lobby was full. The only other time I'd seen that was when I'm at an NBA or NFL event, right? And then they're in the hotel lobby and it's just packed and it's roped off. And this was at Maryland. And three and a half hours before the game, when I'm leaving to, to go over to do my commentating duties, the gym is a mile and a half away. 
It took me 45 minutes to get there. It was nuts. It was insane. Um, and, you know, for the first time, you know, calling her games on the road in a, in a sold out environment and seeing the hoopla, um, you know, I guess you could say Taylor Swift 2.0. Um, it, it was like, th this is, this is the moment that we've reached. And this could be the first time that we've seen the carryover from college to the WNBA. Cause there are a lot of basketball players in the WNBA who've played in sold out arenas in college. Like that, that's, that's become a commonplace. Um, but it had not transitioned and transferred from college fandom to WNBA fandom. And when the number one pick was called, um, the first game that she played and the consequential, consequentially many games since, you've seen it. And, and so to be able to be at this pivotal moment um, is incredible. I really can't put it into words because when I coached that one, number 24 here, and, and, and we were starting this Indiana Fever franchise to now, it's been, this is what we've envisioned. And so to be able to be a part of it on this side and to, to help take it to another level, I'm just, I'm incredibly excited and grateful. You've never shied away from the spotlight, never shied away from the pressure as a player, as a coach, I assume as a broadcaster too, maybe not quite <laughs> as much pressure, but this is going to come with a big mm -hmm. spotlight. Have you thought about all of that here as you transition into this role? I, I haven't thought about it too much. You know, I, I think, um, you know, I, I think a little bit about Joe Mazzullo when he talks about like, we get to do this, right? Like, like you get this opportunity as a, as a player for Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston, like this is what you've wanted, right? To, to be in a position um, to be not just considered some of the greatest athletes, but to position our game, to have all eyes on it. Um, you know, and for, and for me, um, you know, I've learned as I've gotten older how to protect my peace, so to speak. Um, you know, I, I probably as a as a young coach would not have been equipped enough um, to 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 be in these situations. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm still a human being, so emotionally sometimes it, it you know you, you get caught up in some things. But at the same time, you know, I think I've grown so much. Um, you know, I'm very I'm very um, secure in, in in what I bring to the table and and and, and who I am and, and and the opportunity that presents itself. Um, you know, I get to do this. I don't have to do this, and I love to do this. Um, so I think for me, in this moment, I'm I'm just more excited about embracing this opportunity that we have to do some special things together. You mentioned Leah Boston, she and Caitlin Clark, mm -hmm. that duo. What are they capable of? And as you start to formulate how everything looks going forward here for the Indiana Fever, what does their path the next year, three, five mm -hmm. years? look like in your vision? I think they could go down as one of the premier du duos in the history of women's basketball. Um, you know, we talk about a lot on the broadcasting side, especially, you know, the the scoring duos, right? Whether you're talking about, you know, on, on the on the men's side, a Luca and a Kyrie, right? Or, or, or you're talking about on the women's side, you know, a Diana and 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 and, um, and BG, right? So, I'm, I mean, I just, I think that they have an opportunity to go, go down as one of the premier scoring duos, um, you know, in the history of the league. But I also think, because of the types of people that they are um, and because of the types of, of, of leaders that they are and human beings that they are, they are two, two people who impact community, impact franchises because of who they are, just as much as, as impacting the game of basketball because of the numbers that they put up on the floor. Uh, so, so I think we can see you know, a transcendent uh, duo with, with those two. And I'm excited about working with them because I think they're really just scratching the surface um, in, in how they play with one another, certainly, um, but in the impact that they can make in the whole of, of, of a team um, because of the different ways that you can use them. So I'm, I'm excited to get creative. Uh, I'm excited about, you know, talking to them about, about different things that they've seen, that they enjoy, different visions that they have for their game um, and for our team. You've coached superstars. Alyssa Thomas mm -hmm. is recently as a couple of months ago. Tamika Catchings, her, mm -hmm. she's all over this wall, all yes. over this building. Established players, too. How much excitement in this opportunity is the ability to come in with a couple of future superstars who you can kind of help shape and mold here? A little That's bit? exciting. That has a different energy about it. Um, you know, it's. When you when you come in with veteran players, sometimes they're kind of set in, in their ways a little bit. Uh, Tamika, I was fortunate to be a teammate of hers prior to, to coaching you know, her. Um, but th there's there's no substitute for experience. I know I keep saying that, but but young players they don't know what they don't know. 
they haven't been, really been through it. And and getting experience on the floor is one thing, but but helping them navigate all of the the nuance that comes with being you know who they are in this city, in this franchise, um, in this league, and 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 what it takes to get to the next level. It's not just throw the ball out with a bunch of great players and play. It just doesn't work like that. We'd see a, a number of, of of champions if it was like that. You know, it's about timing. It's about experience. It's about adjustments. It's about staying healthy. You know, there's so many things that have to line up. That's why you don't see many dynasties, right? There's so many things that have to line up uh, to position yourself to win a championship and to try to help them navigate this. Um, having been a person who has been a player in this league, an assistant coach in this league and a head coach in this league um, over the course of 25 years, right? To, to, to know that I have had this many experiences. Um, it is a different time in, in the WNBA. Um, that there, there are different things to navigate, but having resources with myself and, and hopefully with my staff um, that have been able to navigate that can, can not just help them on the court, but, but hopefully help them off the court um, and just be a resource for them. When you think back to your previous head coaching stint here, now you started in 2015 and then nearly won a championship. Mm -hmm. You're a game away. So you were ready and that team was ready. But when you talk about the experience you've gotten and how you've grown as a coach, how do you feel different now maybe than when you were taking over in 2015? I feel more poised. Um, I feel more confident. I feel more um, settled. I feel like I have a different perspective. Um, you know, I feel very comfortable in, 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 in who I am as a coach, um, and what I can bring to the table. Um, I feel very, very comfortable in, in understanding that it takes the whole, um, you know, leaning on and empowering, you know, our assistant coaches, um, helping them prepare to be head coaches, leaning on and empowering our players. Um, I've always been a two-way communicator, um, but they're out there on the floor, and every year I've been coaching, I'm further removed from being out there on the floor. Um, so, so to hear their perspective, um, to, to, to have them tell me what they're seeing, and then to help them see my perspective. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a coach tell me at one point, you know, players fly at like 10,000 feet and assistant coaches fly at like 25,000 feet and head coaches have to fly at like 50,000 feet, right? So you got to see the new, see the whole, um, you know, and, and, and just helping walk them through some of these things that, that, you know, may, may happen in May and June, but are going to be difference makers in, in September and October. Um, and then continue to grow, continue to learn. I think the day that we're done learning, um, is, is the day for me to hang it up. There's no doubt about it. Um, continue to become a better coach, continue to become a better communicator, to become a better strategizer, to become a better practice planner, um, and grow with our team, um, in order to help us accomplish our ultimate goal, which is to win championships. Typically, when a coach takes over, there's an adjustment period and some learning, and there will certainly be mm -hmm. that. But you're joining a franchise that you've coached and played for before. You're working for Kelly Kroskoff, mm -hmm. who has hired you before, who has helped navigate this team, helped. She was the architect of, mm -hmm. of the championship run. Uh, Lynn Dunn's an advisor. You've worked with her in many different capacities. Uh, and, and Amber's been all over mm -hmm. the WNBA over the last couple of decades. I mean, how much does it help you to come into this situation and to have those people around you? It helps a lot. Guys, yeah. that was Stephanie White wrapping up her interview. And I'm here to tell you, bro, I am excited. What a day this has been because all last week we weren't hearing nothing. And like for us to get another one-on-one -on -one interview today, get more information, they is letting it be known. They is coming for a championship. Kelly and Stephanie is focused. They finna put together a team to go after all these big teams in the W. They already got the big three, Kelsey, Aaliyah Boston, and none other than the queen of the court, Caitlin Clark, they is coming for blood. I'm telling you right now, they finna be the hottest team in the W for this 2025 season, and they finna put the beast on teams. It's about to be lit. I'm telling y'all right now, pack your bags, book your flight, and head all the way up to Indiana because this 2025 season is about to be fireworks. Get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bells on because you know what? I'm a bring you the news. And until next time, shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out. Shake the haters off.